De regreso aquí en Auto 060, and uh, we're going to switch back to English again because we're going to talk to Richard uh, Rissetti, President and CEO of Seapine Software, which uh, conducted a very interesting poll about uh, how people feel about uh, driving and riding on uh, driverless cars, which is something that apparently, according to this result, uh, is not uh, sitting very well with a lot of people. How are you, Richard? I'm doing fine. How are you, Javier? Excellent. Thank you. So, uh, car manufacturers have been working on these uh, new technologies about uh, making the cars pretty much drive themselves. Uh, and I guess uh, some people are not ready for uh, for this kind of uh, for technology, right? With, like maybe happens with a lot of new technologies in every other field. Yeah, that's um, that's certainly what what we're seeing, and that's certainly what um, others are, are reporting. It's uh, it's not like a, a carnival ride where you can just get into a vehicle and be strapped in and on rails. Um, there are just a lot of variables that come into play, um, even beyond some of the, the security concerns and the um, other concerns around uh, privacy. So it's uh, it's going to take some time for people to get comfortable with this idea of, of just sitting in, in a vehicle that's barreling down a highway at great speeds with uh, little personal control. Yeah. Uh, I'm wondering uh, how the, the, the survey was conducted and uh, how many people who participated in it have uh, have had the experience of being in one of these cars, maybe not driving or even as passengers. Yeah, I don't think right now the number of people who've had an opportunity to experience uh, this type of a, a vehicle is, is very small. So um, certainly a, a lot of concern out there among people to um, even take a chance to uh, and even have access to this type of vehicle. So, uh, according to the study, 88% of adults say they will be worried about riding in a driverless car, and I guess uh, I, I guess uh, this is uh, more about uh, their own safety or like the implications of being in that kind of car. What's uh, what's uh, what's in that uh, result? There seems to be um, seems to be probably three big areas. Um, a lot of people are concerned about liability. Who's who's culpable in the event of of an accident? And um, so that, that's going to be a big area that people need to, that uh, car manufacturers are going to have to overcome. And um, the government is going to be involved in that as well, because there are a lot of, a lot of uh, issues right now, a lot of legislation around uh, automobile safety and around who is responsible in the event of, of accidents. And um, in April of last year, The Economist talked about um, the government potentially limiting exposure just to help the industry get off the ground. But um, in today's environment, it, I think it would be very difficult for exposure to be limited for this type of, uh, this type of vehicle. Yeah, uh, I guess there's already a lot of uh, information going back and forth with uh, simply GPS. I mean, pe most people don't realize that uh, when they turn on their GPS in their car, they all obviously send in information about where they are them exactly at the moment. And like some of the services that provide traffic alerts on highways I mean, based on that, right, the amount of cars that are going on a particular highway or street at one particular moment. So there's already a lot of uh, information being exchanged through the car. That is, that is true. There's, a, there's an awful lot of information there. And um, if you look, uh, the survey results said about 37% of people were concerned about the government having access to that information um, about where they were. Uh, there was... Uh, an article in the Wall Street Journal back in June talking about privacy, and a lot of, uh, about 75% of the respondents for that survey were concerned about uh, companies having, uh, collecting personal information, and interestingly, 70% were worried that the government was going to get that information, which um, I think uh, in today's environment with uh, what's happened with the NSA re uh, revelations, people want to be more private. Yeah. Uh, it's very interesting. I, I mean, like the topic can go for, for uh, I mean, obviously maybe years because apparently that technology that uh, car manufacturers have developed, again, over like decades almost, uh, uh, it's pretty much ahead of uh, government issues like legislation and uh, infrastructure. I mean, like there's a lot of uh, technology that car could use today that uh, will need some like smart roads like to be fully functional, right? Oh yeah, most definitely. If you look at uh, if you look at the environmental just parameters that um, are involved in, in driving a car, you know, light, dark um, roads having markers, not having markers. You have rain, you have snow, which would cover cover markers. Uh, there's there's so many variables there that um, cars uh, 
a lot of the collision avoidance stuff that's going into cars today, I think, is, is fantastic, and that's really probably leveraging more of uh, technologies that have been used for years, uh, radar technologies and such. But when you start to get to a car that has to be able to drive itself and, and stay on a, on a road and avoid other cars in the process, uh, there's a, a lot that's going to have to happen, um, not only from a technology side, but as you point out, from an, an infrastructure side. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Uh, I, I had the opportunity last year to attend a, an event with Nissan uh, where they uh, show us uh, the technology they're working on it. And uh, this car, I think it was a Nissan Leaf, the electric car that had radars and cameras and uh, pretty smart cameras that, for example, we read stop signs, we, we read speed limits, and we read other things that just like the lines on the road. And uh, pretty much the car uh, obeys those rules. Uh, so in, in that sense... Uh, this technology can help uh, not only avoid uh, going over the speed or like over going uh, a stop sign, but uh, the the final goal of all this is avoid accidents and, and deaths and injuries, right? Yes, that, that is true. And I think there's um, there's certainly some things that can be done in cars today. As you point out, uh, uh, cars a lot of cars come with GPSs, and a lot of GPSs today understand speed uh, road speed limits. So. There are safety features that can be leveraged today that uh, could potentially uh, govern a car's uh, a car's speed that could help with safety. And then uh, collision avoidance obviously is is a real big one. Um, there's a lot of talk right now about car to car communications um, with the government getting ready to put together a regulatory proposal, and uh, that type of technology would help one car uh, let another car know its velocity, its uh, potential direction, and uh, that would also help collision avoidance even with two people driving uh, their respective automobiles. Yeah, uh, and uh, so for some uh, car manufacturers, the goal is like 2020. I mean, like, we're talking uh, only six years. I mean, that was the regular cycle life of, uh, of a new vehicle, and now they're talking about something that could pretty much change the whole idea and the whole experience of driving if they can really uh, achieve a, a zero-death uh, because of car accidents, that's that's very short time. But again, technology is moving super fast. That's true, and I think um, you know you put a stake in the ground on a on a date, and if you don't hit that date, at least um, you know you're working you're working diligently towards making progress. And so there's there's a lot of technologies that that are all being developed right now that maybe they come together in 2020, maybe it's 2030, but the end result is, is a continual reduction in highway uh, deaths and serious accidents. So any progress I think is good progress, and uh, overall it probably doesn't impact the cost of, of the car. And it's going to just take time for, as these technologies come together, for the, the cars that are on the road today to be turned over and, and replaced with the cars that have the safety features. So 2020 is a, a great goal, but... Um, Really, the overall goal is just getting that reduction, and that's going to happen in time with, with all the exciting technologies. Yeah, very interesting. We're talking to Rich Ricetti, President and CEO of Seabine Software, which conducted a survey about uh, worries or the, the thoughts about uh, on people about uh, driver's less cars. And another uh, issue that uh, they mentioned, I mean, the only people, only 12% say they will not be worried about riding a driverless car. And again, uh, from the first question, I guess these are people who have probably experienced uh, being in a car that there's not on the production side, but there's like some pretty amazing technology that the, the S-Class, for example, the new Mercedes-Benz S-Class, almost half, 50% drives itself. Yeah, there's, uh, there, there's definitely uh, some, some great technology I wish coming out uh, today that's, that's out today, including the, the Mercedes S-Class uh, technology I wish I had in my car. Um, so people are definitely getting used to um, used to having this available to them, and uh, and, and I believe as if they were to switch cars, they would we would certainly miss the technology. So um, people are definitely getting are going to get used to it. And the driverless aspect is is probably the hardest part to overcome. Um, certainly in, in a lot of countries, America, the you know the open roads, having that ability to get behind the the wheel and just take your car out on the road is is something a lot of people enjoy. I know I enjoy it. So there's going to, there, there will be a certain group of people that will certainly benefit from this. There are a lot of benefits to, to um, appro as we approach the driverless car, including fuel consumption being lowered and um, helping people who are disabled and the elderly be able to get from point A to point B, uh, better traffic flow, lower cost of trucking. It's just going to take time for people to, to get used to that, um, 
not being in total control of the vehicle. Yeah, I guess some people really, as you were mentioning, really just enjoy the experience of driving. But I, I don't know the number, but I will say there's a lot of people who don't really care. I mean, they want to get into the car. They have to get into the car to go to work, maybe just get there. And they couldn't care less if, if the car was doing it on its own, right? That is true. Um, there are certainly people who have a, a very long uh, drive to work, for example, who feel they could get work done uh, much as they would if they were getting onto a, a train. So there's um, car, driving a car can certainly be a chore. And um, interestingly, in the, in the Wall Street Journal article from June of last year, about 72% of people felt that people who were in the car as the primary uh, occupant, uh, which today be the driver, which should not be allowed to surf the web or do other things that would distract them in the event that they had to take over the vehicle. So um, while, there's, while people would certainly enjoy having the ability to be productive or relax yeah. as the car is driving them, there's still uh, a large part of the population that feels, no, they need to be in control in the event that something does happen. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time, Rich Richetti, and uh, we're like uh, half a minute away from uh, the end of this segment. Is there a website or anywhere where people can find more about this study and survey? Uh, yes, they can come to our website, which is uh, www.cpine.com, and uh, certainly learn more about what we do as a company and, and learn more about our survey. Excellent. Thank you very much for your time, and uh, we'll be talking soon, hopefully. Uh, thank you, Javier. Thank you. Bye.